I ordered poutine. This is vomit. You own this dump? Fast food is known for its convenience and its relatively reasonable prices. Yet quality often falls behind as fast food chains scramble to attract customers in an increasingly competitive industry. He's mine! No, he's mine! <laughs> so it shouldn't be surprising that some fast food items simply fall short. So here are 10 times fast food didn't meet expectations. Bowled over at KFC. I feel like a Kentucky Fried Idiot. Kentucky Fried Chicken has been selling delicious fried chicken and sides for decades and has a huge following. But that doesn't mean the Southern Fried Fast Food King doesn't make mistakes. It's okay. It happens to the best of us. The KFC Famous Bowl seems like one of these mistakes. The bowl is a savory sundae with mashed potatoes instead of ice cream topped with fried popcorn chicken, cheese, and gravy. When a product serves as a cautionary tale on a site like WebMD, it's pretty clear something has gone awry. A registered dietitian on the site gave the KFC Famous Bowl a thumbs down, but did recommend the honey barbecue sandwich. Oh, I see Terry! He's having a chicken sandwich! This chicken sandwich is relatively lean compared to the Famous Bowl. The honey barbecue sandwich might not be a green salad, but it feels like it in comparison when you consider the pile of fat that makes up the Famous Bowl. Taken separately, the ingredients in this fast food item are fine, but throwing them together in an avalanche of food just didn't meet expectations. And cut. It's a McWrap. Wrap it up. The premium McWrap is a McDonald's menu item you'd be more likely to find at Subway or Panera. This alternative to burgers is a mix of grilled or fried chicken breast with cheese, lettuce, and tomato folded into a wheat wrap. McDonald's offered a selection of McWraps, including sweet chili chicken, chicken and bacon, and chicken and ranch. You might think these would be can't-miss menu items in our era of greater health consciousness, Business, but according to a Bloomberg article, this thinking is wrong. The fast food giant was trying to target finicky millennials with its premium McWraps, but apparently it simply didn't meet this demographic's expectations. McDonald's believed that these customers were looking for lower calorie, healthier options, but it turned out they were satisfied with the traditional fast food fare of burgers and fries. Oh, I just want a one pound burger that a snake couldn't fit its mouth around. Perhaps part of the problem was some of the McWraps were fairly high in fat. You can do better than this by choosing some of McDonald's burgers. And many people did just that. No waffling at Taco Bell. What is this? A waffle taco? What's next, a pancake enchilada? The Taco Bell waffle taco is what it sounds like. A waffle folded into the shape of a taco with breakfast fillings like scrambled eggs, cheese, bacon, and sausage. This menu item is a good example of the idea that just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. It seems like Taco Bell was trying to do a Mexican-themed version of an Egg McMuffin or a McGriddle. It might have sounded good in theory, but looks like a lazy attempt to improvise a snack customers can eat while they're driving to work. Hmm, what's the easiest thing to eat in a car? Since people do want a fast food breakfast item they can eat in the car, Taco Bell decided to give the biscuit taco a try. Like the waffle taco, it contains scrambled eggs, cheese, and sausage or bacon. The biscuit taco sounds like it had potential, but it didn't fare any better than the waffle taco. The waffle taco lasted for about a year before being discontinued in 2015 after disappointing sales. But never fear, Taco Bell does offer Cinnabon delights. I've been eating Cinnabon for breakfast, lunch, and dinner for the past six months. These are little balls of sweet dough filled with creamy icing. And these certainly can be eaten in the car on the way to work. Chipotle burrito bowl? What, are we going to listen to her? She's eating a burrito bowl. Ugh. Chipotle still sells its burrito bowl, even though its reputation with customers is not very good. The fast food restaurant's online menu shows the different ingredients customers can choose. There is a selection of meats, beans, rice, and toppings that allow customers to create their own custom burrito bowls. Chipotle's burritos have generally received good reviews from customers. Mmm, Chipotle. 
So what's the problem with the bowls? Is a burrito without the flour tortilla wrapping not good? What explains the disappointment with the burrito bowl? The Chipotle brand took a hit a few years ago when the fast food chain struggled to deal with a series of contaminated food incidents. The incidents caused customers to reconsider just how safe it was to eat at a Chipotle restaurant. The safety scare doesn't explain the specific issues with the burrito bowls that failed to meet many people's expectations. Perhaps any weakness with the flavors and textures of the meats and toppings are masked by the wrap and its density, but are left exposed when featured in the bowls. Customers can be finicky, but they have made their feelings known. Chipotle's burrito bowl didn't meet expectations. Hot dog and burger crust. Some things just don't mix. Every once in a while, pizza chains like Pizza Hut up the ante with their toppings or their crust or both. In this case, Pizza Hut escalated the pizza crust wars with the introduction of cheeseburger and hot dog crusts. The cheeseburger crust is a deluxe crust option that consists of adding as many as eight cheeseburgers to a pizza. Instead of using standard burger buns, the carb part is more like a puff pastry. But each puff of pastry holds a burger patty and cheese. According to some tasters, the cheeseburgers don't really taste like cheeseburgers. Burger. It's just a cheeseburger. Which seems a little strange since making a decent cheeseburger is a pretty fundamental part of the fast food industry. People can get a cheeseburger anywhere. Even though Pizza Hut specializes in pizza and related menu items, it is disappointing to learn the fast food chain struggled to come up with a decent burger. And apparently the hot dog crust didn't fare much better. It's been labeled as bizarre. This might be a little strange strong, but it's reasonable to assume many pizza lovers don't feel the need to add hot dogs to their pizza crust. It's a question of overkill. You can like hot dogs, cheeseburgers, and pizza, but this doesn't mean you want them transformed into some kind of fast food science experiment. Wendy's Canadian Baconator No! You gave me Canadian bacon instead of bacon? Wendy's Baconator Burger was designed to increase sales in U.S. locations with the key fast food demographic of 18 to 34 year olds. But it was the Canadian Football League that took it to the next level. As part of a cross promotion, the league named Wendy's Baconator its official burger. Canadian customers were given a bacon shaped scratch ticket with every purchase of a baconator. The new scratch and win tickets are out today! Winners would get the chance to attend a CFL halftime and build a giant baconator sandwich. The Baconator consists of two beef patties, strips of bacon, ketchup, mayonnaise, and American cheese on a bun. This sounds like a winning burger, so what happened? According to a sampling of customers who posted their thoughts on a product review site, there was a wide range of reasons the Baconator failed to meet expectations. The complaints include words like bland, expensive, small, and not enough bacon. That's not more bacon! This is more bacon! Several customers expressed their disappointment that the marketing photographs had enticed them to order the sandwich, and then the actual product looked nothing like what they were expecting. In fairness to Wendy's, all businesses use ideal images in their advertising that often don't match up with reality. But it sounds like there were some legitimate issues with the Baconator, or the Canadian one, at least. Hey Domino's, that's a lot of bread. Time to carbo load. Domino's used to get a bad rap for letting the quality of its pizza slide as it expanded their menu into other areas. Taste in pizza, like most other things, is very subjective, but Domino's does offer salads, sandwiches, and pasta for customers who are looking for something different. However, these customers may not have been looking for bread bowl pizza pasta. Oh boy. That was a tongue twister. This is a bit of a mouthful, literally and figuratively. The regular pizzas at Domino's are made with plenty of dough, but they must have thought they needed a way to up the carbohydrate count, so they came up with bread bowl pizza pasta that is pretty much what it sounds like. A bread bowl made of pizza dough filled with pasta and your choice of pizza toppings. Pizza is great, and bread bowls are probably good, and pasta is usually good. 
The question is whether they should be combined into one gluttonous item. Too much of a good thing. It happens. Apparently, Domino's customers felt this abomination went a little too far and failed to meet expectations. Box it up at KFC. I was gonna put it in a box. What's a box gonna do? Kentucky Fried Chicken's United Kingdom site describes its Zinger rice box as one piece of our original recipe chicken filet with steamed Tex-Mex rice, fresh lettuce, and a bean salsa drizzled with sour cream sauce. Zinger refers to its mildly spicy and tangy flavoring. Frankly, these meals look and sound pretty good, but sometimes when the items are purchased at a store, they just fail to meet expectations. The KFC nacho box also seems like a good idea. God, a whole mess of nachos sounds good right now. This snack item offers the popular popcorn chicken, cheese, and salsa over a bed of tortilla chips. It seems like this one comes down to the quality of the ingredients. Nice, big, crunchy chips would be good, but broken, soggy chips would definitely not work. Either way, it does feel a little strange to have KFC trying to sell nachos. The King's Philly Cheeseburger. I'll take a burger over a gross Philly cheesesteak any day. The Philly sandwich includes American cheese, fried onions, as well as a cheese sauce that is supposed to replicate the classic cheese sauces found on authentic Philly cheesesteak sandwiches. It seems like the cheese sauce is the key to whether or not this sandwich works. What do you think is coursing through my veins right now. Cheese whiz. The Burger King Philly is served with the pair of beef patties resting side by side, covered in cheese and onions. This sandwich sounds like it should be a tasty hit, but potential doesn't always translate to the real world. People who enjoy Philly cheesesteak sandwiches expect a certain level of quality. No doubt, fast food chains like Burger King do strive for a certain level of quality, but sometimes it falls short when other factors come into play, like producing the sandwiches fast and cheap. Chains like Burger King operate under very slim profit margins and must control costs carefully, often by cutting corners. In this case, it seems like cutting corners resulted in a cheeseburger that simply didn't meet expectations. Unring the Taco Bell. It's like a tostada. This is not a tostada. In 2014, Taco Bell introduced its spicy tostada as part of the fast food chain's $1 cravings value menu. This inexpensive tostada was offered with refried beans, red sauce, creamy chipotle sauce, shredded lettuce, tomato, and shredded cheese on a tostada shell. This sounds like a decent list of ingredients, but we know the ingredients are only part of what makes a tasty snack. Done right, it'll be tastier than the sum of its parts. One of the problems with this menu item is that it is billed as a spicy tostada, but the chipotle sauce was judged to be decidedly mediocre. In exchange for this less than overwhelming flavor, you would consume 200 calories with 10 grams of fat and 440 milligrams of sodium. People know they're not getting health food when they order at a fast food chain, and most of us will accept this if the food is of good quality. However, if the food's not very good as well as being unhealthy, then there's going to be a problem. It's not surprising then that Taco Bell's not very spicy tostada didn't meet some people's expectations. Tap that screen for another great video. And to all our subscribers, thanks, and be sure to ring that notification bell.